What's up guys? Welcome back to our series, Block Party, which is all about something that's important to all of us and God, and that is friendship. Hey PT. Uh, hey Paula, do you know what uh, all this is about? Um, what are you talking about? Uh, I'm talking about the lights, I'm talking about like the alarms going off. It just seems like something is wrong. I'm pretty sure everything's fine, everything's okay here. Uh, no, this looks like a big deal. It looks like somebody let the T-Rex loose. T-Rex? Yes, yeah, like the alarms are going off. I'm sure it's fine. Maybe it's just a false alarm. You know, the lab assistants are always doing things. T-Rex enclosure has been breached. The T-Rex is loose on the premises. Uh, this seems like a pretty big deal. I'm sure it's not a big deal. Everything's good. Um, oh, let me see. Uh, maybe he's... Oh my gosh, it looks like he's going to the duplication room. Duplication room breached, multiple T-Rex detected on premises, please uh, proceed with caution. Maybe the T-Rex wanted to come to the party. You what? know what, maybe we have like T-Rex cake and T-Rex music. Did, did you let the T-Rex out? Uh, Are you sure? Cause you... Uh, okay, okay, I messed up. Um, so I saw okay. the big red button and I pressed the big red button and then I saw the T-Rex and then I ran and came and I didn't know what else. Okay, it's okay, okay, we can figure this out. All right, let's just see. Uh... We'll be right back. See you guys.
So, as you know, we have a memory verse for the month. We're going to throw it to our Imagineers so they can share it with you. All right, see you guys in a second. Hey, Kids Life. We hope you're having a great week so far and just want to go over this month's memory verse. It comes from Proverbs chapter 17, verse 17, and it says, A friend loves at all times. They are there to help when trouble comes. Proverbs 17, 17. We hope you have a great week and can't wait to see you back in the lab next week. Okay, we're back, and I think everything is under control. Yeah, we got all the T-Rexes except for one. Yeah, we're working on it though. Right now, we're still talking about friendship, and we're gonna look at the best friendship in the Bible between two friends and what happened with them. So let's check this out. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of 1 Samuel, chapters 18 through 20. Now imagine for a moment that you're a prince. It's a pretty cool job. Your father, King Saul, is a fierce and handsome warrior with a hot temper. Away from me, you fools. Saul is the first ever king over the land of Israel. And since you're his son, most people expect you to be the next king. You'll live in a fine palace, wear royal robes, and carry the best weapons. Your name is Jonathan. Call me John. You got a great life, right? But then your dad hires a new guy, a young man your age named David. He was only a shepherd boy, but somehow, through the power of God, David has just defeated the giant Goliath, saving God's people in the battle against the Philistines. I come against you in the name of the Lord. Your dad has given David a place to stay in the palace, in a high-ranking army. You and David even become friends. Now imagine that David fights in every battle and wins. The people of Israel are even more impressed with him than they are with King Saul. King Saul is like... Great. Yeah, but have you seen David? He is like awesome sauce. To top it off, you've heard rumors that David has actually been chosen by God to be the next king of Israel, instead of you. It would be so tempting to be jealous of David, to not talk to him or hang out with him. But that's not who Jonathan was. It's not what Jonathan did. In 1 Samuel, we discovered that instead of being jealous, Jonathan chose to share the best of what he had with his friend. Here, take my robe. Then people will see how important you are. Are you sure? Take my belt too, and my sword. But these are all things for a prince. You're worth it. Thank you, friend. King Saul, on the other hand, 
did become jealous. So jealous that he hurled a spear at David. And later on, he told Jonathan and all of his servants to kill David. Jonathan was horrified. He quickly warned his friend. Find a place to hide. I'll talk to my father and find out what's going on. The next morning, Jonathan faced King Saul. Don't harm David. He's helped you. He put his own life in danger to kill Goliath. The Lord used him to win a great battle. Why would you kill him? Okay, fine. I'll show you how awesome sauce I am by not putting David to death. Jonathan and David were relieved. And for a short time, all was well. But then King Saul went back on his word. He tried to kill David again. And when he fell, he sent other men to try to kill David. I haven't done anything to your father. Why is he trying to kill me? He won't do it. He tells me everything and he hasn't said a word about hurting you. That's because he knows we're friends and you would tell me. This is terrible. I'll do anything I can to help. So the two friends made a really complicated plan, like something out of a spy movie. Their top secret plot had David hiding instead of showing up for the feast, while Jonathan made up this story to try to find out how angry his dad was. Now, instead of going outside and talking to David about it, Jonathan chose to shoot arrows close to far like a secret message. In the middle of it all, their friendship stays strong. Whatever happens, please be kind to me. I know the Lord will defeat all your enemies someday, but promise to always be kind to me and to all my family. I promise. Shake. Shake. The two young men made a promise to stay friends no matter what might happen next. Then, it's time to put the plan into action. When Saul discovered that David was missing, he was filled with rage. I knew it! You're on his side. That is so not cool. As long as he's alive, you'll never be king. Why do you want to put him to death? What has he done? Saul was so angry, he couldn't think clearly. He actually threw a spear at his own son. And Jonathan left immediately. And the next morning, he hurried to the place where David was hiding and sent their top secret arrow code message. When David realized things with the king were not good, the two friends ran to meet up. One last time. I'm so sorry. My father. I know. It's not your fault. Jonathan and David hugged each other and wept. Go in peace. In the name of the Lord, we've promised to be friends. He will be a witness between us and our families forever. There was nothing more to say. David left the city to hide from Saul and Jonathan went home. Now Jonathan could have allowed Saul to kill David and maybe become king himself. But instead, Jonathan trusted God and chose to protect and love his friend. Okay, it's pretty amazing, this friendship between Jonathan and David. I mean, Jonathan was the one everybody expected to be the next king, right? It was going to be handed to him. He was going to be the most powerful person in the kingdom. He was going to rule the kingdom, but it got passed to David. And everybody expected Jonathan to be king. And Jonathan didn't get mad. He could have. He could have been angry. He could have been jealous of David, but he chose friendship. He chose to help David. He chose to share and give David anything that, that David needed. Jonathan chose to love David. And it's so awesome, that example that was set. That shows you how to be the very best friend, that no matter what good things happen in your friend's life, you can be happy for them and you can help them. And you can give them the things that they need to do whatever they're trying to do. The cool part about that was is that David came back and he helped Jonathan's family. Through all the crazy stuff that happened, this friendship was strong because they chose to love each other. And we can have friendships that look like David and Jonathan's. All we have to do is be that type of friend, to be a friend that loves no matter what, to be a friend that rejoices or is excited when good things happen for our friends. And so I wanna pray over you for this week that you would choose to love your friends and to be the type of friend that Jonathan was to David. So let's pray. God, I just thank you for my amazing friends. Thank you, Father, that you help them be the type of friend that Jonathan was to David, to be a friend that rejoices when good things happen, to be a friend that, that helps and that shares and that loves no matter what. 
And God, we thank you that as we strengthen these friendships, God, not only do we grow stronger in these friendships, God, but we grow closer to you. And so, Father, we just thank you for friendships, that you help us choose the right ones and you help us be the right friend. In Jesus' name, amen. Speaking of friends, it's time to talk about friendship in our Imagineer groups. So, whoever you're watching this with, you guys gather together, but space apart, gather together and enjoy your time talking about friendship. <laughs>